If that doesn't make preaching easy, I don't know what does. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his Son, our living Lord, and our reigning and supreme Savior. Would you bow your heads, Father? As you and your Son and Spirit are one, please allow your servant, your word, and wisdom to become one, that we may affirm the imminence of your kingdom, the power of your Spirit, the Lordship of your Son. I trust you now for preaching. Guide my mind and my mouth for a few moments. Touch, strengthen, and save in accordance to your will for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 20. <clears throat> I want to read a couple of verses in outline um, my sermon for the morning. I'm going to be a good steward of the time. I'm going to, I'm going to show some of y'all that I can, I can preach under 10 minutes. I'm going to show you. Uh, I didn't say I was going to show you today, but I'm going to show you. Uh, what, what the Lord could have me to do. 2016. Jesus said to her, Mary, Rabboni, do not hold on to me because I have yet to ascend to my father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of St. John. This large pericable starts really at the 20th verse. There were three words that I wanted to outline this morning uh, for you that I think are encouraged uh, in this particular um, sermon for the morning. And then there's a concept that I wanted to share. And I'm just going to outline it uh, this morning. Um, but 1130 crowd, woe be unto you. Uh, <clears throat> I think this passage depicts three things about life. One, impermanence impermanence. One of the things that many of us dread is the lack of stability, lack of direction, lack of nailing things down and having our ducks in a row and things lined up and our chips stacked. One of the things that we spend and spend a great in an amount of our time and mental energies is to prevent impermanence. We like something stable. We like to put our glasses down and know that when we go back, they're still sitting there, even if we can't remember where we put them. <laughs> Amen. Um, second word, I think that this text uh, lifts up to us, verses one through the it really through the uh, entire chapter, is the word permanence, the antithesis of impermanent, uh, impermanence, permanent, permanency. Uh, we, we like, and it's, it's 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 good. We like some things that are stable. I, we just like to know that there's some things that are just not going to change. Uh, that, 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 that sense, and I, and I think the older that we become, uh, the, the more we like some things that the same. Uh, we like oatmeal the way that we like oatmeal. This instant oatmeal, that's not oatmeal, that's a form of oatmeal, but if you've ever had real oatmeal that was, you know, the, the, not, the, not the minute cooked, but the 20 minute, and you start it in cold water uh, and just let it boil and, and gurgle a little bit on the back eye, for about 30 minutes, add a little brown sugar and cinnamon and butter, and I prefer canned milk. Canned milk, it's not like a good thing of canned milk uh, on, on that oatmeal, and get two pieces of toast and put butter on it and let that hang on the side. And if, if you've never had that, you, you really haven't had breakfast. I, I, I guess what I'm saying, that there's just some things in life that we like to be stable, but we live with impermanence. There's very little that's in this life that it is stable that will stay stable forever. Regardless of how well you build your house, you're still going to have to do some maintenance. They can tell you that your shingles will last 25 years, but in the 26th, 27th year, just as sure as you, as my papa was, as sure as you bone to die, those shingles are going to wear. It doesn't matter how much you paint the boards on the outside, they will rot 
because there's very little in this life that is eternal. Oh, you, you are a living example of that. You just keep on living and, and you will find that, that you can go to bed feeling fine and wake up and, you, and something's hurting. How can you sleep all night on a soft mattress with a pillow and warm and wake up and you've got something hurting that wasn't hurting when you went to bed? Just keep on, but things fall apart and down. Oh, talk to me, somebody. I'm not, you know I don't have much time. Uh, and, and I was going to talk about the word impermanence, things that are always in, in transit and transitory and, and then things that are permanent. And then the other word that I really wanted to talk about is perseverance. Uh, that, that this text teaches us about perseverance. You've got to hang in there and you've got to stick in there when others will walk away and leave you. And you've got to be able to have hope uh, when everything is dark and dreary between the setting, between the rising of the sun and the setting of darkness. In between light and darkness, you've got to be able to live and hold on with what you have. Now, that's, those are the three words that I wanted to talk about. And out of those three words, I wanted to lift up one uh, the, the, our case story is Mary Magdalene. Uh, she's had a good rap and not a so good a rap. Mary Magdalene of Mary of Magdala. Um, some texts say that she was an influential woman. Um, and according to Luke 8 and 2, she helped bankroll, uh, financially support the ministry of Jesus with some of the other women. Uh, so the text will also say that uh, she had seven demons and Jesus cast demons out of her life, her life. Some say that she may have suffered from epilepsy, and suffering with the epilepsies, they so associated that with being demonically possessed. Uh, but, but regardless of what it was, this lady had lived with a sense of impermanence. She was a single woman, um, and she was traveling with Jesus and the disciples without an escort. Luke um, infers in that seventh chapter that she may have been a lady that made her money through her physiological uh, economic endeavors. Did y'all catch what I did? Did I, did I do it right? Was that did, was that all right? Okay. Um, that 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 uh, that uh, she she made it well anyhow, and um, and uh, she knew what it was uh, to live with temps. Uh, she lived in a temp place, dealt with temp folk, dealt with temp feelings. So she knew what it was not to have a sense of permanence. But when she met Jesus, she found something that was permanent. Jesus was the same yesterday and forevermore. When she would see him in the morning, he was Jesus. When she'd see him in the evening, he was Jesus. If he came off the side of the mountain after praying all night, that was the same Jesus. If he fed the multitude of the, and, and broke bread and they don't know how he broke it, he was the same. He was the same yesterday, today and forevermore. See, if I, see that's, that's what I was really going to work on and spend some time as how you have stability in the midst of lame brothers and sisters who ain't about nothing, ain't, don't want to go anywhere, and if you're not careful, they will drag you down. The, the other thing that I wanted to say, that once she found permanence, she went back to the tomb during this time of impermanence, and, and she was troubled, but perseverance made her stay there. You've got to have some durability so that when things aren't jumping off just like you like them, you can stay there anyhow. For the race is not to the swift nor the battle, to the strong, but to the one that'll hang on in there. You've got to learn how to hang in there during a midnight hour. That's what I wanted to work on right there, you see, and, and spend a little time and encourage us to, to be, to be not, not to give up so easily. And she stayed there. The, the, the disciples, Peter and John, left. They went back. One believed. One did not believe. But the girl stayed right there, and she stayed there long enough until she saw the resurrected Christ. Uh, and, you know, I, I was fumbling with this text, and I don't have time to, 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 to fumble like with it like I want to fumble with it. But, but I was wondering with this text, uh, and, and, it, it, and, I, and I had labeled this an inside job. Uh, how did Jesus get out? Uh, it was an inside job. How did he get the, the linen grave cloth, clothing taken from him? It was an inside job. How was a stone rolled away? It was an inside job. How did he get clothed? Remember, they took his clothes when they crucified him. But yet when Mary saw him, he had clothes. Where did he get his clothes? It was an inside job. There are just some things that God can do on the inside that you can't see, you can't explain. All oh, that you know that it was nobody but the hand of God that made a way God is. 
oh, I, I, see, that's what I was going to really work on that this morning. But then the other thing that caught my attention was that the text says, not the, not, not the King James, not the NIV, nor the New Revised Standard, it said she was holding on to him. But, but the, the original Greek gives the connotation that she was clinging. Now, is it a difference between a hug and a hug cling? Can I hug you without clinging? When does a hug become a cling, Judge? You need to help us, yeah. A, a, a cling, when you really look at that, and, and I, I fumbled with that, and I, and I did, I said a, a, a cling can mean that, that you hold on to each other or you hold on to something that doesn't hold back to you, but you just don't let it go. Uh, it says that you can cling with your hands and with your feet. Now, did that girl hook up and do one of these? I ain't going to let you go. I, don't, see, I, I can't mess with that just right here, you say. But the text says she was clinging. When you found something permanent and has blessed your life, you just don't turn it loose. Finally. Well, Lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, finally, let's see, I want to talk about those two words, impermanence, permanence, and perseverance. She persevered, and the Lord said to her, now, Mary, I want you to go back. Uh, turn me loose, girl, but Lord, turn me loose, girl. Now, wait a minute, baby, baby, baby. Hey, baby, 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 turn me, turn me loose, but Lord, turn me, baby, turn me loose, baby. It's all right, but Lord, turn, come on, baby, girl, come on, girl. Things have changed. Now, you can't hug me like you, you well, I don't want to say you used to hug me, but, but you, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, but I want you to go on back to the disciples. And I want you just to tell them that the um, Lord is alive, that I've seen the Lord. And I think at the end of the day, that's where your permanence is. Then I was going to talk about uh, an article from Yoga Journal, uh, December issue on uh, the art of impermanence. December issue, pages 15 and 16. And it talked about Tibetan monks, but I don't have time to really uh, d deal with that right now. But, but the, I, I would close uh, with the understanding that out of your impermanence and your permanence and your perseverance, there's still some times in life uh, where you need some help. Um, I tell the story of an old uh, country farmer, and um, he went out in the backyard early one morning, and when he went out in the backyard, he hurried up on the ridge, like in the mountains of western North Carolina in East Tennessee, they got those ridges, and, and he heard the baying of hounds, and uh, he heard these hounds running, and uh, he could tell that they were getting close to their quarry, and he looked up across the field, and he saw a fawn, a young deer. Uh, that was running and he could tell that those mature strong hounds were running that fawn down. He knew the fate wouldn't be much longer but it seemed like the fawn mustered up enough energy and jumped an old wooden fence and ran across that freshly plowed field and he did something strange. He ran to the farmer curled up around the farmer's legs and hung his head between his legs. Hounds kept coming. They knew now that their quarry was close and that it would all be over in just a matter of moments. The old farmer heard the hounds and saw the hounds coming and something inside of him reached down and picked up the fawn and put that little fawn in his bosom. And when the hounds got close, the, the, the old farmer started to fussing, telling him, get out of here. Go on, scoop, go out of here. Don't you, mess, right, don't you mess with that. And all the fawn could do was just hang in the farmer's arms as the farmer fought the hounds off of his life. Finally, the, the hounds recognized that they were not going to have that fawn because the farmer had him. They one by one walked back across the ridge and then when the hounds and the trouble was gone, the farmer set the rested fawn back down on the ground. And with uh, legs a little tired, the fawn started walking away from the farmer. And then that, that's where I would finish up right there. That there have been times in our life that something has run us down. And uh, we had no way of getting away or escaping the danger that was all around us. But we made our way to our Father. 
and got down around our Father. And when danger was going to destroy us, I'm here to report the Father reached down. See, I'd stop right there and picked us up and held us in his arms. And uh, when mess would have destroyed us, he said, get out of here. When the devil was trying to ruin us, get out of here. And he held us until dangers passed by. And when the storms of life had passed on over, then he put us back down. And now we can walk around knowing that our Father is able to take care of us in the times of danger seen and unseen. I would stop right there and say that you need to know that the Lord is able to take care of you. Be not dismayed. Whatever the ties, I ought to have a witness right there. God will, God has taken care of you. Has he made a way? Has he picked you up? Has he turned you around? Has he given you joy? Has he touched your body? You ought to say, yeah, yeah, I'm so glad. I'm going to stop there, but I wouldn't stop there. Impermanence is some things in life that you just got to learn how to deal with. You know, since you're crying and wimping, you've got to learn how to enjoy the game, not the score. You've got to learn how to shout on a fumble. You've got to learn how to praise God on a drop ball. You got to learn how to thank God when the quarterback sacked. You, you, you've got to learn how to thank him for every play in life. Because if you live, you're going to get sacked. <laughs> if you stay here, you're going to fumble. If you stay here, somebody's going to block you. you you've just got to learn how to get down and get right on up. Because the game is not over until the master says, well done. Come on and stand with me. The Lord is good. Do you love the Lord? Oh, come on now. Yo, do you really love the Lord? Hasn't he been good to you? Just look at you. Just look at you. Just look at, don't look at that. Just look at you and say, you know, the Lord been good to me. Uh, just let's look at you and say, Lord, I thank you for being so good to me. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, you brought me from a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, you brought me from a mighty Oh, through the valley, through the valley, through the valley. Oh, you brought me from a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Yeah, you brought me from a mighty extend you an invitation for Christian discipleship. I know we're a couple of minutes, but, but come on quickly. Give your life to Christ. You're going to need somebody. You're going to, no, no. You're going to need Christ. You're going to need somebody, but you need Christ in your life. I don't mind saying that without any apologia. You'll need Christ along this journey of life. Commit your life to him. What are you clinging to? And what's clinging to you so tightly that you can't give your life to Christ? What's holding you back so strongly that you can't take a, a step of commitment and say, I'm going to make Jesus my Lord? What, what, what's got you bound so tightly that you can't walk away and walk up here this morning and say, I'm going to give Jesus my life, the church my hand, and I'm going to serve him with gladness. Quickly give your life to Christ today. If not now, before the week is out, before the day is out, you find a time, take the time to experience Jesus as Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time. 
We thank you for your presence. Ever keep us in your care as we learn to walk more by faith and less by sight. But we do ask this prayer of faith and offer this benedictus in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. Go in peace. Have a good rest of the day. Take care of yourselves.